Guys, welcome to Epic Explorer. Today, we're diving into a fascinating topic, the worst US presidents in history. We'll be exploring the leaders who didn't quite hit the mark, according to historians and scholars. And guess what? President Trump is on our list. Let's uncover why he's considered one of America's least successful presidents ever. Stay tuned to find out more. Let's talk about George W. Bush coming in at number 10. Now, if we're looking at his legacy, one shining aspect would be PEPFAR, his program to fight HIV and AIDS. It saved millions of lives and made a huge impact globally. But Bush's time in office wasn't all sunshine and rainbows. There were some serious issues like letting a ban on assault weapons slip, leading to more mass shootings. Plus, there were controversies over things like torture and privacy violations with the Patriot Act. And let's not forget the big economic crash that happened during his presidency, one of the worst since the Great Depression. But what really sticks in people's minds? The wars? Yep, Bush launched major conflicts in Iraq and Afghanistan. So, when we think of Bush, it's often with war on our minds. Number 9. President Zachary Taylor Back in 1849, a 64-year-old man with a strong military background became president. But here's the thing. He didn't know much about politics and had never voted before. Taylor's tale is quite common for presidents back in the 1800s. People were drawn to him because he was seen as a hero of war. But once he took on the role of president, things changed. He struggled to figure things out. His time in office was super short, just a year and four months before he passed away. Some say he might have recovered from his illness, but the medical knowledge back then wasn't great. Taylor was a simple guy, not really cut out for the rough world of politics. He owned slaves, but didn't want slavery to spread beyond the southern states. And get this, there are even rumours that he was poisoned. So yeah, Taylor's presidency wasn't exactly memorable, but it definitely had its share of drama. Let's talk about Herbert Hoover, our number 8 president. Now, when we look back at American history, Hoover isn't exactly everyone's favourite guy. He's mostly remembered for his not-so-great response to the Great Depression. Instead of focusing on helping people, he thought tariffs on trade would fix things. But that just made things worse, with other countries hitting back with their own tariffs. The trade war didn't do much to help everyday Americans, and neither did his tax cuts. Plus, Hoover wasn't the best at communicating with people. When the Depression hit, things went downhill fast, with unemployment skyrocketing, People were really suffering and Hoover's conservative approach didn't help. So, they kicked him out and brought in Franklin Roosevelt, who had some big ideas for fixing things. Roosevelt blamed the whole mess on Hoover and went on to become one of America's most celebrated presidents. Tough break for Hoover. It's John Tyler, our number seven president. Tyler became president unexpectedly when William Henry Harrison passed away just a month into his term. He earned the nickname His Accidency because he was the first vice president to become president due to the death of a president. Even though he was elected as a Whig, Tyler didn't really stick to their beliefs, the Whigs weren't too happy with him, and even Harrison's entire cabinet resigned in protest. Tyler was all about states' rights and supported slavery, which didn't sit well with everyone. He vetoed some Whig proposals and they tried to kick him out of the party but couldn't. After his time in office, Tyler went on to support the Confederate side during the Civil War. Now on to number 6, Millard Fillmore. So where does Fillmore rank among presidents? Well, he's often near the bottom and some folks think he belongs in the bottom 5. Fillmore became president after Zachary Taylor died in 1850. One of his big moves was backing the Compromise of 1850, which was supposed to calm tensions between states that allowed slavery and those that didn't. But here's the thing, the Compromise actually allowed slavery to spread into new areas and it included a law called the Fugitive Slave Act. This law forced free states to capture and return escaped slaves, punishing anyone who helped them. Fillmore thought this compromise would avoid conflict but it just made things worse. He has kind of dodged the moral question of slavery during the Civil War and ended up supporting the Confederate side. 
tough times indeed. Remember to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon so you don't miss out on any of our videos. Let's talk about Warren G. Harding, our number five president. Now Harding wasn't exactly confident about his job as president. He even told his friends that he wasn't really up to the task and didn't understand much about foreign affairs. It's kind of strange because when he was in office, he was super popular, people really liked him, and some even compared him to Abraham Lincoln. But as time went on, we learned more about Harding and his administration, and it's not all pretty turns out. Harding was pretty lazy, he spent a lot of his time golfing, gambling and hanging out with ladies. Yep, he had a reputation as a bit of a womanizer. Recently, historians found a bunch of love letters he wrote to his mistress, which were sent through the mail. But the worst part? His administration was super corrupt. There was this big scandal called the Teapot Dome scandal where members of his team took bribes from oil companies. Congress and the Supreme Court weren't too happy about it. And Harding didn't even finish his term. He died from a stroke halfway through. Now on to number four, Franklin Pierce. This guy was all about expanding America's territory. He was a big supporter of Manifest Destiny, the idea that the United States should stretch from coast to coast. He even wanted to take over Cuba, but Congress said no. Pierce thought letting people in new territories decide about slavery themselves was the best way to go. So he supported the Kansas-Nebraska Act, but that just caused a ton of trouble, especially in Kansas, where there was a lot of violence over slavery. The whole thing made a big mess of politics, especially for the Democratic Party. Tough times for Pierce and for America. Let's talk about Donald Trump, our number three president and 2024 presidential candidate. Now, Trump's time in office was full of scandals and controversies. He's actually the only president in U.S. history to be impeached twice, though he wasn't convicted. His leadership was pretty controversial, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic. He went against what experts were saying, spreading confusion and even suggesting some pretty dangerous stuff like using bleach to treat COVID. After the 2020 election, things got even messier. Trump spread misinformation about the election and even encouraged his supporters to march on the Capitol, which led to a violent riot. And now he's facing criminal charges in multiple places, including Georgia. Moving on to number two, Andrew Johnson. Now, Johnson's impeachment was a big deal back in 1868. Even though he and Abraham Lincoln had very different politics, Lincoln chose him as his running mate to help bring the country together after the Civil War. But Johnson clashed with a group called the Radical Republicans, who wanted to make things more equal, especially for black Americans. Johnson's actions set back efforts to rebuild the South after the war, leading to more oppression and violence for black folks. So, yeah, his presidency wasn't exactly a shining moment in history. Before we get to our top pick, let's quickly mention a few other presidents who had their share of issues. William Henry Harrison's presidency was super short because he caught pneumonia after a super long inaugural speech. Benjamin Harrison's economic policies caused a big panic and Chester A. Arthur signed a law that discriminated against Chinese immigrants. And then there's Calvin Coolidge, who favoured big businesses over struggling workers. Tough times, indeed. Let's talk about James Buchanan, our number one pick. Now, historians don't have much nice to say about him. He's basically at the bottom of the list. Buchanan gets the not-so-great honour of being the president who watched America fall apart into civil war, even though he personally thought Slavery was terrible. He didn't really do much to stop it from spreading. He just went along with whatever kept the peace, even if it meant letting slavery grow. And during his time in office, things got really tense over slavery, leading some states to want to leave the country. When Buchanan finished his presidency and went back home, he didn't do much reflecting on his time in office. He pretty much left all the mess for the next guy, Lincoln, to deal with. Buchanan didn't really do anything to stop the country from falling apart, and that's why he's at the bottom of the list. So, those are our picks for the worst presidents in American history. But hey, maybe you have different ideas. If you do, feel free to share them in the comments. Please subscribe our channel.